lead the leaders entrusted to secure these goals. In our case, justice, unity, peace, liberty, and prosperity for all have a duty to reflect on their performance in the search for these hallowed goals. Such a time has come for Kenya. 54 years into independence, we are challenged to audit our progress towards the ideals for which our fathers fought to establish a free and independent country, and for which many of our compatriots died. We, the leaders, are equally summoned to reflect on our performance towards the achievement of our nation's aspirations. This audit and introspection has been a long time coming. Throughout our independence history, we have had doubts on how we have conducted our affairs in the face of growing divide along ethnic, religious, and political lines. Regrettably, we have responded to our challenges by mostly running away from them. We have moved from year to year, election to election, never pausing to deal with the challenges that our diversity was always going to pose to our efforts to create a prosperous and a united nation. Consequently, the ties that bind us are today under the severest of stress. Our diversity appears destined to be a curse to ourselves today and to our children tomorrow. In the past, you have given a lot of attention to institutional reforms in the hope that this could lift us to the next level of nationhood and make us a blessed land. Seven and a half years ago, we gave to ourselves a new constitution. We put our faith in it as the instrument to revolutionize our nation. In this way and many other ways, we created some of the best hardware any country has ever possessed to engineer their affairs. We must be courageous enough to admit that it has not worked. It has failed because we are here to upgrade our software. We have been pouring new wine into old wine skins. The gospel tells us that new wine needs new wine skins. The time has come for us to confront and resolve our differences. These differences are becoming too entrenched. No two Kenyans agree on the origins of the differences and what they portend. Millions of our children continue to be born and married into these differences. People are dying out of these differences. Many of these differences are already well entrenched in the third generation of Kenyans that are currently leaking in the fourth generation in primary and secondary schools. Yet in many instances, Kenyans cannot remember why and where they disagreed in the first place. As we fight or 